So the first thing I want to talk about is stage analysis, because um, I don't know how many people in the audience know about it, but stage analysis um, derived by Stan Weinstein is simple, but really powerful. And basically what he's showing there is a stock price going up. David, point to it, please. Yeah, the stock's price is moving up in stage two above its 30-week moving average. So you got a stage one where a stock is basing, then you've got a stage two when the stock or the ETF or whatever is rising above its rising 30-week average, then the stock and the moving average sort of you know, gets flat, and then you start going behind a falling 30-week average. That is stage four. And what I teach the students, and I actually saw a tweet, next tweet, David, next slide, from a quote from Stan Weinstein, take the oath that you are never going to buy another stock in stage four or hold on to any of your stocks once they move into stage four. I would say, I would add to it that you never want to be in the market when it's in stage four. And so you want to memorize that um, stage analysis pattern. And I'm going to show you basically how it, how it can be used. So it's basically a weekly chart. The price is above that rising 30 week average. Go ahead, David, next. So why is the market trend so important? I'm gonna spend a lot of time on market trend because I think it's the key. And by the way, with stage analysis, if all you did was no stage analysis and you stayed out of the market when it was in stage four and you only stayed in stocks when they're in stage two, you probably wouldn't get into much trouble. Go ahead, like most people get into. So even the great Nicholas Davis basically said, I found that the relationship between the average and my individual stocks were confined with, within certain principles, but they could not be measured exactly. From then on, I made up my mind to keep watching the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which is what he basically had available back then in the 50s, but only in order to determine whether I was in a strong or weak market. This I did because I realized that a general market cycle influences almost every stock. The main cycles like a bearable market usually creep into the majority of them. Next, David. So we all know that's what the M and Can Slim stands for. Next, David. And this is a quote from uh, William O'Neill. And again, he's saying the same thing that most stocks follow the averages. And I wanna just say, he said, therefore in your analytical toolkit, you absolutely must have a reliable method to determine what direction the market is headed. Next. So um, to my students, I sometimes quote, quote my blog and I just want to say, read to you part of this because this was really an important lesson that I learned. And uh, you know, you can apply the, the right setup. You can do what Davis said, you could do what O'Neill says. But what I learned is the critical point to remember is that the same price pattern or setup that works so well in a rising market is likely to fail in a declining market. And Davis, used to say, and O'Neill did too, you know, and David Ryan says, that. I mean, they all say it, when you've been doing well in the market using this particular setups and all of a sudden your setups aren't working, that's the first usually quick, quick warning that the market is weakening. Go ahead, next. All right, I wanted to show you this because this is the Dow average monthly from 1929 until 1956. And I wanted to show this for a couple of reasons. First of all, I wanted to sh show you that if you look at October 29, David, point to it. That's what everyone talks about, that big red down month. But notice the market came back up and then the crash occurred. So the, the, the 29 drop, even though it happened in one month, was nothing compared to what happened through 1930, 31, and 32. The other thing I want to show you from this chart is look at the top of the Dow and then look at when it was beat, broken again. 1954. So when people say the market comes back, they usually are right, but you know, they probably don't know that at least in 29, it took 25 years. I don't have 25 years left to wait for a market decline to come back. All right. The other thing I wanted to show you, and I'll show it to you more clearly in a minute. When Davis made his money in the fifties, the market was going to all time highs. That is such a critical filter and it's a critical thing for you to know. All right, this is the side, next David, go. 
this just shows you the S and P 500. This does not include dividends up and down. It just shows you, you know, whereas the market mainly goes up every year, there are some big down downdrafts. I remember 1974 when everyone was talking about a depression. I was in graduate school then. And I remember what happened in 2000 and actually the NASDAQ found more than that. And then you can see in 2008, the collapse. And notice the S&P 500 in the dotted line. If you wanted to, and you didn't want to get it out of the market, of course, you all know that the, you could have stayed with the S&P 500 and eventually you would, have, you would have been above water. But you know what? I don't want to be in the market when it has drawdowns like that. I don't want to see 50% of my university pension disappear in mutual funds. The next. So I wanted to show you this because this is how a lot of brokers, and I tell, I tell my students, I, I ask them if any of them have a parent who's a broker. Usually they don't. I say it's aptly named, your broker will make you broker. And basically what I say, what the brokers will tell you is they'll use a study like this, which looked at how you would have done if you've been out of the market over 25, in 25 days in a 45 year period, all right? And they show you this red line. And what it says is, boy, if you missed the 25 best days, you did terribly. Compared to if you just stayed in, look at the gray, you just stayed in, boy, you did much better. What they don't show you is the green shot. And the green shot shows how you would have done if you missed the 25 worst days. So they try and tell you, oh, don't try and time the market because look, this is what happens. You, you know, you're gonna miss out. But the point is, if you if you're out during the worst days, you're gonna do a lot better. And um, and I, I I'm sorry when I see this on the web and I see articles and they never talk about this green line, basically. 